Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the functions of the pins on the Arduino, the difference from analog, digital, and PWM, and various ways to light multiple LEDs using various inputs. So what are the functions of the pins? First we have the digital pins, which can be configured as either input or output. Input is the default state of a pin, so you don't need to configure it to be input. Input uses very little power and is very sensitive and good for capacitive touch. Inputs can also be set up as input, pull up, or pull down. This is because of the sensitivity of the pin when it's set to input. It can be ambiguous as to what the state of the pin is. Often when you're using a button as an input, you'll change it to input, pull up, or pull down to be sure of the true or false state when you are hitting the button or not hitting the button. Next we have analog pins. Analog pins are similar to digital pins, except for that when set to output, they output a number between 0 and 1023, instead of just true or false. Analog pins can also be configured as either input, output, or either input pull up or input pull down. So basically the difference between analog and digital pins is that analog returns a range of values, whereas digital returns true or false type values. Next we have PWM pins. PWM pins you can tell from the little tilde next to the number on the Arduino board, such as pin number 10 or 9. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, often used to mimic an analog signal from a digital pin. It doesn't send the signal constantly, but it sends it on and off really fast like flicking a light switch. A call to analog write between 0 and 255 increases the speed that this light switch is turned on and off. For example, at 0 it would be like the light switch is off all the time, and at 255 it would be like it's on all the time. Some other pins on the Arduino is the AREF pin, which stands for analog reference, and configures basically the top input value of the analog pins. It defaults at 5 volts, but you can change it using this pin. We have the power pins for the default 5 volt or 3.3 volt power supply, as well as you can supply your own voltage baseline using the pin VIN. Last we have the ground pins, which are just used to ground your circuit. They all work the same. Now let's take a look at the prototype I've built that will be used in the programming section of this video. This is an overview of what it looks like. There are 8 LEDs representing the 8 bits in a byte. There are connected to resistors followed by a wire. And those wires are connected from pins 2 to 9 on the Arduino. This is an infrared receiver used with a little remote I have. Two of the wires are, one of the wire goes to the voltage, supply it with voltage, the other one goes to the ground to ground it, and the final one goes to one of the pins on the Arduino, I've chosen pin 11, and that's what sends the data to say what what happened with the, the IR-ness, you know, yeah. Here's a closer look at how the LEDs are plugged into the board, making sure that the positive longer side of the LED is on the side where the voltage is coming from, and the shorter side is connected to ground. So they're all connected to the blue wire, that signal travels to the yellow wire, and that's one of the ground pins on the Arduino. Now we're actually going to program our LEDs to do something. When you start a new file in the Arduino IDE, this is what you'll see. You'll get a function called setup and a function called loop. Setup will run once when you first turn on the Arduino and loop will run repeatedly for as long as it's turned on. So remembering that we connected our LEDs to pins 2 through 9, 
you can take advantage of an array and loop through that array so that we can set all the pins to outputs at once. Once the pins are set to output, then in the loop function, we'll be able to turn them on and off. We're going to use another loop to turn them on and off one by one and then turn them all on and then all off. So first we'll create an integer variable named bits and fill it with the numbers 2 through 9. Next we're going to loop through that array and set all of those pins to output. Now in loop, we're going to make two more for loops, or yeah, that was confusing. In the main loop function, we're going to create two more for loops, one to turn the lights on one by one, and one to turn them on, all on, and then all off. After that, we'll have another short delay, and then we'll have them all light on and then turn off. Turns out we're actually writing three for loops in the input. Then we'll add a longer delay at the end of the sequence and actually between the two parts of the sequence as well. Alright, now I'm just gonna save it as something. I'll call it LED Blink. Next we'll click this to verify that we didn't make any mistakes. And then click this button to upload. Now we're going to write code so that we can use the remote control and the IR receiver to decide which light turns on. The IR receiver came with a library that you include. Like this by adding a zip library. And then once you do, it should be in here. And then you can either click it or just type out manually. And I'm going to paste it in the variables that I know I need. This is the number of the pin that the data from the IR is being sent from. These two object types come from this library. So if I didn't have this included, then these lines would give me an error. This just creates an instance of the receiver so that I can call things on it. And this is, creates an instance of the results. We're gonna add some more code to our setup. So on our receiver object, we're gonna call enable IRN. And that just starts our receiver. Now, now we're gonna comment all this out. And then we're gonna listen for input from the receiver all the time. This block of code right here, along with these two variables, were from the documentation that came with the IR receiver and probably would all throw errors if you didn't include this. But basically what these things, two things do is create objects necessary to hold values and call methods on the IR object. And this is saying if my IR object decodes results, so if you're getting results, then we're going to call translate IR, which we're going to write in a second, or copy and paste rather. And then after that, we're going to resume listening for input. So here's the translate IR function. 
looks like a lot, but I'll just explain what you need to know. Basically, every time that you press a button on the remote, it sends a code like this. So we're switching on that result value. So for example, this one is connected to the play button, which would is going to play back our light animation thing we made earlier. Down here are the numbers where we're going to call toggle LED and decide which light we need to turn on and off. So the two functions that we need to write now are toggle LED and light animation. So let's uncomment this code. And this whole thing right here, this is basically our light animation. So we're just going to cut that. Let's write a new function called light animation. And just paste that in there. So now every time this gets called, this stuff will run. For toggle LED, we'll need a function with an input. That input is going to be which one of the LEDs we're actually talking about. And it'll be an integer value. We'll call it LED slot. So for the toggle LED function, we're going to need an input that is which LED we're talking about. And that can be an integer value. We'll call that LED slot. So if we read the value of the LEDs at the index of LED slot, and we find that to be low, then we want to change that to be high. And if it's in the high state, then we want to do the opposite. Well, I've added two parentheses here and here I don't need. Let's go through this translate IR. So translate IR is called up here in loop whenever we get a result. So when we press the number one, we're going to decode the number one. And that's going to be one of these codes right here. And it comes from our results object. What's the value of our results object? Are these things. So when I press the number one, which would be the first LED, but it's the zeroth index in our array, we're gonna call toggle LED that we wrote. So that will be toggling LED on LED slot zero. And if that light is off, then we'll turn it on. And if it's on, then we'll turn it off. Right here is the play button on the remote. And that plays our light animation that we made earlier in this tutorial. This has been episode two of my Arduino tutorial series. Today we went over the functions of the pins on the Arduino, the difference between analog, digital, and PWM, and we learned various ways to light multiple LEDs using various inputs. Next time we're going to advance our LED project so that it can display representations of bytes and then turn it into a binary calculator. Thanks for watching. See you next time.